This Learn Electrics video looks at the model forms or certificates that we should use when completing electrical work. It's a requirement that we inspect and test all our work before handing it back to the customer and, important, that the correct forms are completed. There have been several posts on social media recently about forms and certificates and questions have asked things like what certificates and forms do I need to complete? Which type of job goes on which type of certificate? Why do we have certificates, forms and schedules? Which one do I choose? So the purpose of this video is to advise which forms go together as a pack for the customer and which forms are relevant for particular types of work. Many electricians will already be using the correct forms, but there are many that for one reason or another are not. Hopefully, this video will help to re-establish what needs to be done and for new starters in the industry it will help to unravel another of our mystery processes. These notes are based on the IET model forms to the 18th edition amendment 2. The forms are available as a free download for use within your own business for certifying and reporting electrical work. You may create your own forms but they must contain as a minimum the information boxes contained in the model forms and you may add extra information boxes to your own forms that request additional information that might be relevant to your own business. The front page of each set of forms sets out the IET's copyright terms. It allows us to reproduce the model forms for our own use in our own business which I've done for many years. It also informs us that we must not sell copies of the IET forms. Stay within their rules and all will be okay. How do we access the model forms? We'll show you where to find the forms as free downloads that can be saved as PDFs on your own computer. This is the web address to enter. We will also put this web link onto the description page for this video. When the page is displayed, look for the entry shown in the red box. It will say, Model Forms, the Institution of Engineering and Technology. Click on the title and you will be taken to another page. This is the opening page to find the downloads. As you can see, it tells you that this is the model forms page. Scroll down by half a page and you will see the four model form links for 2022 Amendment 2 PDFs. Previous, older versions are also available from the same page, so be careful that you choose the right ones. We can begin by opening up the PDF for an electrical installation certificate. This is often shortened to EIC and sometimes called a full electrical installation certificate, all the same thing. The link will open up a PDF that can be saved on your own computer or device and can be printed in its entirety or just page by page. An EIC will comprise of at least six pages, more if you use extension pages. The first two pages are the actual certificate itself and how to actually complete the certificates and forms is part of another Learn Electrics video. These two pages are only valid as a certificate when accompanied by the rest of the paperwork in the set. In addition to the two certificate pages, we must also supply a completed schedule of circuit details and a correctly completed schedule of test results for the work that we've done. The customer won't know what paperwork to expect. It's up to us to make sure that they get the correct items. And the last page for the customer is the guidance for recipient page that gives the customer lots of useful advice about their installation and the paperwork that you hand over. And a page for you, the contractor, telling you what you should be doing with the documents. This last page also indicates what an EIC should be used for to help you to choose the correct forms. An EIC is for the initial certification of a new installation or for additions or alterations to an existing installation that includes new circuits being installed or for replacing a consumer unit or distribution board and as an alternative to issuing multiple minor work certificates where additions or alterations have been made to several existing circuits. We can look at the Minor Electrical Installation Works Certificate next with the initials MEIWC. 
This is often written as just MWC for Minor Works Certificate. Everybody knows what you mean. Click on the appropriate link and a saveable PDF will open up for you. Just two sheets of paper for a Minor Works Certificate. The first page is the actual certificate and the second page is the guidance notes for the contractor and the customer. When should we use a Minor Works Certificate? It's used to certify additions or alterations to existing installations that do not include the providing of a new circuit, a new consumer unit or a new distribution board. For example, adding lighting points and light switches to existing lighting circuits, relocating lighting points and light switches, adding or relocating socket outlets to existing socket circuits, replacing accessories or luminaires. And you will see from this list that all these circuits already exist. We are just adding to it. And there will be lots more examples of work that goes onto a minor works certificate. Let's look at the EICR next, the Electrical Installation Condition Report. It is a condition report to be completed during the periodic inspection of a property. Clicking on the link will open up a different PDF pack that can be saved to the PC. Note that this is a report, not a certificate. With a certificate, you are signing to say that everything is 100% correct, complete and safe. With a condition report, you are making a statement about the condition, good or bad, of the installation. The report is issued whether the installation passes or fails. It is then up to the client to arrange any necessary remedial work as identified in the EICR. We are looking at nine or more pages to an EICR, depending on how many extension sheets are used. The first two pages are the actual report itself, which shows the address of and the type of installation being inspected, and also lists the observations or defects, the C1s, C2s, C3s, etc., that affect the safety and reliability of the installation, as it is on the day of the inspection. Most importantly, is a line in section E of the report that asks you to state, in your opinion, whether the installation is in a satisfactory condition for continued use, or it is unsatisfactory because of what you observed. And any C1, C2 or FI code will make the installation unsatisfactory. Then we have the schedule of circuit details and schedule of test results that must be completed accurately and, ideally, compared to any previous schedule of test results as the installation may have deteriorated since the last inspection. There are three pages of schedule of inspections to complete and if followed through in order they will actually walk you through the inspection process in a nice, organised and methodical manner. The pages will actually help you. Many of the inspection items will include a bracketed regulation, for example 521.5.1 etc. They will point you at the actual wiring regulation that applies to that particular inspection item. Read the regulation in the book to fully understand what you are inspecting for. And lastly, the notes for the contractor and the guidance for recipients pages. Nine pages in all. So what is an electrical installation condition report used for? This is not a certificate. It is a report on the condition of an installation. It is a statement by a competent person of the installation's fitness for purpose and electrical safety for continued use. You will state if the installation is satisfactory or unsatisfactory. It is not to be used for installation or remedial work. This will be recorded on an EIC or a minor works certificate and is not part of the inspection process. The report is used to record the facts about the installation, any damage or deterioration, any defects or dangerous conditions and for reporting non-compliances with the wiring regulations that may give rise to danger to the users of the installation or cause a fire. There are three types of form sets shown in this video. An EIC or Electrical Installation Certificate, a Minor Electrical Installation Works Certificate, often called Minor Works Certificate, and an EICR or Electrical Installation Condition Report. With an EIC or Minor Works Certificate, the works must be completely finished and satisfactory before the certificate is issued. Think of it this way. 
If you have a snagging list, then the work is not finished, and you do not issue a certificate until the snagging list is cleared. With an EICR, things are different. The condition report is issued along with all the observations and your satisfactory or unsatisfactory outcome. It is a statement of fact at that moment in time. Correcting the defects is not part of the inspection process. The inspector's job is just to inspect and test and to report their findings. Any remedial work is a separate work task or contract, and it does not have to be the inspector that carries out the remedial work. If the customer arranges for the defects, etc., to be corrected by a competent person, when they are all done and certified by the person carrying out the remedial work, the installation automatically becomes satisfactory. There is no need to carry out a repeat inspection. The certificates for the remedial work change the installation from unsatisfactory into satisfactory. Here's that web address again, and we will leave a live link in the description to this video that will take you to the IET website where you can download the model forms for your own use by following the steps listed in this video. As well as the three sets of forms shown in the video, there is a fourth option to download all the model forms as one PDF pack. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.